Yo, what's up, boys? Today, <clears throat> I'm doing a patch notes review. I don't normally do patch notes review, but as you can see at the very top right here, it says mid-season, and there is a ridiculous amount of information we need to cover. So, let's just go straight into it. We got a bunch of skins, a Stranger Things collaboration. Shout out to my boy Trevor, the vice president of hi res he, he manages all this stuff. He did Avatar. He did uh, Stranger Things. He did uh, the other one that I can't remember off the top of my head. But he's doing big things. Also manages Rogue Company, for those who don't know. Amazing skins. I'm just kind of going to skip through the skins. You can stop and, and look at them if you want. But me personally, I'm not too interested in the skin aspect. I'm much more interested in the balance and the changes. So I'm just going to skip right into it. <clears throat> Here we go. We have all this stuff, um, honestly, you know, just chests and stuff like that. Don't really care about that. Paid track items, don't care about that. That's all just battle pass stuff, like I said. Quality of life. Everyone already knows this. You get reset to Diamond 1. If you're higher than Diamond 1, and reset to 2400 MMR. If you are above 2400 MMR. So there you go. Duel got an increase in bands, in my opinion... <clears throat> yeah, going from five to six bands doesn't matter. Um, they're trying to fix duel with a band-aid. They're trying to put a band-aid on it. Be like, okay, you're good. But um, that cut is infected, right? Duel, duel is infected. It's not going to heal off a band-aid. You're going to need a little something more than than, than just a band-aid to, to fix duel. Um, now, what does that mean? Well. I don't think it's horrible. It is a band-aid fix, like I said. Um, it will help immediately, but with them implementing more and more gods, I don't think it will do much at all. We need a little bit more for duel in this scenario, but that's okay. A uh, bug fixes, I'll stop here. You can pause and read them if you would like to. I personally don't give a shit about bug fixes. Um, I don't know. I know some of them could be a change, but they're just whatever to me. So you can pause. These are the items that were changed. And finally, we're getting into it. So the Ocean's Fury Conquest update has arrived. The Raging Storm summoned by Tiamat culminates in a massive tidal wave washing over the lands between, o <clears throat> excuse me, between Olympus and Babylon. The sky's clear, shining a light on the effects this event has had on the map. The storm passed. The sea just outside the map still seems angry. So basically, it's got the map got a little bit bigger, and they just played it off like, oh, there's a storm team that's bitch, right? Okay, cool. Map got bigger. Duel Lane has a new jungle area outside of the lane. Boom to the left. Um Alpha Harpy is split into two Alpha Harpy spawns, the one that favors each team on the right. Solo lane has a new XP camp marked by a wrecked ship on the environment. I have not seen that change, but it is cool. Solo gets a little more XP, so they can come and fuck up mid just that much earlier. Um, back harpy location on the red buff side has been adjusted to make room for a new camp. Ooh. And what are these? Various sea life puddles and damage are scattered across the map. Finals have been removed. That's kind of cool. I would like to see this. The map lighting. Oh, it's a brighter map again. Oh, it's a brighter map. I love to see it. I don't know how to say this. Dragger, I'm going to assume. The dragger is immediate. Hold on. Dragger. The dragger is um, a medium tier objective with a similar health and strength to the greater scorpion. Sliding it rewards your entire team with a nice golden XP injection, plus a long-lasting defensive buff to your towers and phoenixes. In the mid-game, this buff can help relieve pressure in a match that is veered out of your team's control, allowing you to group up and make a stand at your towers more effectively. While not strong enough to be a direct counter to an enhanced fire giant buff, teams on the defensive can, can race to grab this before preparing for a phoenix defense to help turn the tide of battle. The aquatic entity has risen from the depth, or from the deep, Challenge the gods, slaying it grants your entire team's dragger's boon. Uh, towers and phoenixes receive a stacking buff of 7% increased power and 5% damage mitigation for each allied god in the radius. That's pretty nuts. 
So if you get this buff and you're Phoenix defending, your Phoenix will have 21% more damage and 15% less damage taken because it stacks three times. That's really good, actually. That that's that's a comeback mechanic in conquest. They don't, they've never added a comeback mechanic in conquest. So this is gonna switch things up a lot for the meta. Just just an absolute ton for the meta. And I think um I think I'm going to have to see how this plays out, but just from an outsider looking in, a comeback mechanic in Conquest seems obnoxious because if if I have Fire Giant, I'm I'm supposed to, you know, it's supposed to be big. It's supposed to really hit heavy, you know? Um, and I, I mean, I, it still does, right? It still does. But a comeback mechanic makes it a little bit lackluster. Maybe you don't make those those risky FG calls. Maybe instead you just immediately push after getting a pick or two and FG becomes less valuable because of this. Don't give them time to get this. Instead, just push, you know? I don't know though. Who knows? I'm not very good at Conquest. Um, New dual lane side jungle area. It has camps and here's the scaling and the stats of it. I don't care about that. You might. New jungle buff. This is fucking lit. Why is this fucking lit? Because this was in the game back in the beta back in the beta there was a green buff and it was sick and it gave you so much hp5 and you were invincible obviously they took it away because it was way too strong but they they put it back in apparently with some reworks while wearing this jungle buff on near on nearby allied gods wait while wearing this jungle buffs on nearby allied gods will not expire oh this effect does not apply to other support buffs. Also grant 50 maximum health and mana plus an additional 30 for every other for every 50 prots. Oh my god. They're a permanent red buff? They added a permanent red buff, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> That's insane. That's crazy. Anyways, what does it do? When it's enhanced, it grants 10 HP 5 and, uh, and MP 5. The Dragger minion holds this buff on the red camp side, just outside bases. <laughs> okay. That's nuts. I, I love it. Balance. All right. Enhanced damage buff. I assume... I assume the enhanced damage buff... Doesn't move over to duel. So I assume this is all conquest balance still. Uh, enhanced damage buff has 3 more percent lifesteal. Speed buff has 2% more move speed. And mana buff has 5% extra max mana. So that's cool. That's cool. Fire Giant got a bit of a buff. A little bit harder to kill. Gold Furies got also a little bit harder to kill. Oracle's a little bit harder to kill. Lesser Scorpions actually increased uh hp regen when you kill them and nerfed actually easier to kill and more of a reward for killing it so i that's kind of interesting and the alpha harpies are split into two now so they also got nerfed a little bit and split up to split that xp cool other game modes here we go boys in duel once the phoenix is slain all ranged auto attacks will now pass through its pedestal. That's my doing. I know you guys might be mad at me. I've been going around. I noticed that when the Phoenix is down or when it's up even, um, you can't auto attack through it. So as a melee character, you could just kite around the Phoenix and they, the hunter couldn't hit you, right? They, they just, they just couldn't hit you because, you know, for whatever reason, even though in past, all phoenixes you've been able to auto attack through and in this in this case in duel is was still able to auto attack through the phoenix but no other god was so it was a bit of a bug i actually liked not being able to auto attack through it and i i told them about it um and i give them proof and they're like okay yeah we'll fix that and i was like hey, could you just make it so so is can't auto attack through the phoenix like we can't do that with the way her auto attacks work. So instead we're going to make everything auto attack through it. And I was like, ah, that's shitty, but whatever. I understand. At least now it's a little bit fixed and I'm happy about it. And that is my doing. If you hate me, I'm sorry. Benevolence taken out of duel. Thank God. No more animosity. 
No more benevolence. Now we're gonna definitely see Boomba's meta, mannequins a little bit more. Mannequins got Omega buffed. We'll get to that later. Um, we're gonna see mannequins a lot more. We're gonna see Conduit Gem a lot more because it got buffed. We're gonna see Vampiric Shroud a lot more. I think taking out benevolence from Duel really opened up all the other starter items in Duel. Boomba's obviously is probably still gonna be the meta because of Boomba's hammer reducing cooldowns and Boomba's spear increasing the damage you're doing to objectives, but. I still think there's a lot of room for, uh, for variety now. So I love these two changes. Honestly, I do. Um, Arena. Map got a complete visual overhaul to match the theme of the update. Stranger Things. The Greco-Roman Arena now lays in darkness covered in otherworldly life as the gods battle through this parallel world known as the Upside Down. The three lowest XP members of each team now receive one extra bonus XP per second. A little bit of a comeback mechanic in Arena, huh? They're just comeback mechanicing everything. Now, into items slash relics. I'm losing my voice, but that's okay. Let me take a sip of some what? Er, <clears throat> and get to it. Meditation, my new favorite relic. Basically, instead of when you used to use meditation, it would give you a percent of your health back, and you'd be like, oh, okay, cool. Or it would give you like 300 health back and 300 mana back, and you'd be like, all right, cool. The new meditation is when you enter a meditative state, when nearby allied gods within 50 units restore, or when you press med, basically, nearby allied gods, including yourself, within 50 units restore 8 plus 5% of their missing health. So 8 base health plus 5% of their missing. So when you're really low HP, you pop this, and you're just healing up, right? Now you might be thinking, well, that's kind of shit, right? 5% 5, 5 missing HP and mana. Until you realize it heals occur once every second for four seconds and you might think that's that's four ticks of healing right that's 20 percent of your missing health plus you know whatever that is 32 or something um 32 plus 20 percent of your missing health you'd be like okay that's that's pretty good right you'd be wrong it takes five times because it ticks when you use it and then ticks once more for each of the four seconds that it's active so you use it and then it goes tick 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 for the four seconds it's active and you have actually 40 HP plus 25% of your missing health and mana when you're really low. So it's, it's very strong. I've been using it a lot on the PTS and, uh, and abusing the shit out of it. <laughs> it's very, it's my, fa it's my favorite relic now. Um, plus when you upgrade it, you get additional each, additionally, each pulse reduces cooldowns for all abilities by 0.5 seconds. Chang'a, Hebo, Thoth, raw right off the top of the dome piece right those things those gods love mana reduction or not mana reduction i'm sorry they love cooldown reduction this takes five times that's two and a half seconds off all of your abilities for using med it's, it's basically like a better upgraded bracer it's a better upgraded bracer <laughs> speaking of bracer um <clears throat> hello darkness my old friend Come to talk with you again. Bracer got removed from the game. Anyways, we'll talk about that in a second. Spear got reworked. And, um, or Sunder, I guess, is what you should call it, not Spear. It got reworked. So now, it's not that much of a re rework. But, so they basically, they didn't, it's the only relic that can miss, right? Sunder is the only relic where you use it and it can miss. Um, because it's a skill shot, right? So they wanted to kind of help you be less shit with your Sunder. Because Sunder's meta and, and everyone's missing it now. And Hyrus hates you for missing. So they want you to be less bad at the game. So they made Sunder half as good as it normally is. But have two of the charges. So if you miss your first charge, you could still throw your second out. And be totally fine, right? Upgraded wise, it's actually better than what it was if you hit both charges. Uh, stops on the first god hit, deal 15% of their current health is true damage, and there's two charges, so 30% of their current health is true, true damage if you hit both. Reduces their shield basically by 100% if you hit both. And they take 20% increased damage for 5 seconds if you hit both. So it's, I mean, it's a really good active. Um, it's basically just like... I don't know. They, they, they made it just a little bit easier for you, so you don't have to hit your spear every time 
now if you miss it, you still have that second charge to kind of help you win that fight, you know? <clears throat> now we get the Bracer. Removed from the game. I know I went over that, but it got replaced by Bracer of Radiance. Don't use it in duel. It's not going to be good. But you place a Radiant Glow at a target location for 90 seconds. A ward. You place a ward for 90 seconds. Allies who move through this ward gain 10% power when they're above half health or 10% movement speed if they're below half health for 8 seconds. This fragment acts as a ward. If destroyed, the cooldown of the relic is reduced by 20 seconds. So basically, you place it down. If somebody places a sentry down and breaks it, then you get 20 seconds off your cooldown. If you if nobody puts a sentry down and breaks it, then for those for that minute and a half, basically until the cooldown is back up, um, you know, maybe like an FG fight or something like that, or a Gold Fury fight, or maybe you just really want to like help a teammate out who's running away who's about to die. You could place this down, give them 10% movement speed, and they could run away, or vice versa. You want to engage and you're all fragging, and you just get a 10% extra power boost for your whole team. You know? So this is gonna be used a lot in conquest, I think. Um, what is the what is the increased version, the upgraded? The rating glow acts as a sentry ward. Okay. So it's not much different. I think it's pretty good for conquest. Um, obviously I don't think it's very good for duel, but it couldn't, it could, I could have a lot of fun with that in a conquest game boots. Now this is the biggest thing, the biggest thing boots have been removed from the game, remove them and all boot upgrades from the game. Players in all modes now receive 18% movement speed over their first seven levels. So once you hit or once you load into the game, you start with very low movement speed, right? Basically like you had before. Over the course of those first seven levels, you're slowly getting more and more movement speed until at level seven, you're finally at that 18% movement speed, and that's when it stops. So when you, basically you get finished boots by getting to level seven. You obviously don't have the power of the attack speed with it, but it leads into builds where you can go first item Rata Tahuti or first item Book of Thoth, and you're not sacrificing that move speed. You're not sacrificing that ability to get ganked or something. So it's going to make things a lot faster paced, actually, by removing boots. They're increasing the pacing of the game, which is weird, but it, that's how it is. Um, they're increasing the pacing of the game, but also making gods feel a little more safe by building full damage. Like that AMC and ADC lane, who first item transcendence, you can't abuse that as much anymore because he is still going to have that 80% move speed. So I'm really excited to see what this kind of does for for the game. Um, I I love, I absolutely love companies like hi who are who are willing to take a MOBA and flip it upside down and say, I know every MOBA in the world has boots that increase movement speed, but what if we didn't? What if everyone by default had boots and we could focus on those builds? You know, those all six items being utilized as a build mechanic. And I think that's dope. I think that's super cool. Um, obviously, they removed Elixir uh, of Speed as well from the game because there's no point in it. But um, this is this is by far the biggest thing, and I'm looking forward to seeing what everybody does with it. I'm super so I'm stu super stoked about it. Now we get into items, more items that is, yeah, over over relics, enchanted spear, ten a little bit reduced, but magical power a little bit increased. Why would they change the tier two item of that? Well, they did the same thing to heavy mace actually, because you don't need boots anymore. So instead of starting with the starter item and and tier one boots and some pots. You could start with Enchanted Spear, which is 1,400 gold, a health pot and a mana pot, have five base base pen and 40 power right out the gate, right? Like, they're opening up these opportunities to try and kind of change the meta a little bit, you know what I mean? And obviously with, with Mace, it already has 35 power on it or 40 power or whatever. Um, and they reduced the pen. They, did, they basically just made Heavy Mace the same as Enchanted Spear, but 50 gold more. Eh. Um... So yeah, just this is just to help with starter starting the game. Pitch of all, I don't need to run over it too much. It was way too much uh, attack speed reduction, so they lowered it down from thirty percent to now twenty one percent. 
um, attack speed reduction, which is a significant uh, a significant difference. I still think it's super overpowered, but you know, whatever. What do I know? They increased the power from 30 to 35. So now instead of getting, what was it? You got 65 power because it was 15 per stack, right? Or maybe it was 10 per stack. Either way, you get a shit ton of power from this item. You get like 75 power from this item now. And 21% um, attack speed reduction. So it's still super good. Mystical Mail, they're doing this thing where they're scaling items, right? Scaling them to be a little bit different. And I actually like it quite a bit. So with Mystical Mail, what they're doing is they change the passive damage from 40 to 30. So you, immediately you're like, why did they nerf it by 10? But then... It gets plus one damage per level. So instead of going 40 damage the whole time, it goes from 30 to 50 damage over the course of the game. So it's actually doing more later in the game and even a little bit less early game, but not by much, you know? So like, I actually think it's very good because by the time you normally get this item, you're like level eight or nine anyways. So it's almost going to be not even a change and just a buff to the later game version of it. So I like this a lot. Um, wing blade they decrease the cooldown reduction from it because again you're going to be able to not go boots and so wing blade can be rushed a lot earlier and they don't want you to start the game with 20 percent ccr that seems absurd my second favorite item uh other than the uh the meditation let me get another sip of water real quick um the, is the new staff of murden so <clears throat> What it does, basically, they lowered the power by 15. But the new passive is when your ultimate ability is finished casting, you, gains Murden's, you gain Murden's Brilliance, which provides 80%, 80% uncapped cooldown reduction, slowly decaying to 40% uncapped cooldown reduction over 7 seconds. <laughs> um, uncapped cooldown reduction overrides normal cooldown reduction at, at the end of the 7... seven oh my god. At the end of the 7 seconds, you lose Murden's Brilliance. This can only happen once every 45 seconds. Now, I know what you're thinking. You have to build 80% cooldown to get this uncapped cooldown reduction. No. I tweeted at uh, Clumsy and Ponpon. I asked them, and they said, when you alt, you get 80% cooldown reduction immediately. Yes, it applies to your alt. You get 80% cooldown reduction immediately, slowly decaying over the course of 7 seconds down to 40% cooldown. And then after the 7 seconds is over, it cuts off. And you have your base, whatever the cooldown is that you have in your build. So it's my favorite item. I love that. I love this item. Um, just playing gods like Baron Samity, Chang'ai, Hebo, Giannis. You can just spam that damage. Like Giannis, you can you can two portal two portal two portal two portal and like like four times in seven seconds. It's ridiculous. Um. This, I'm going to have a lot of videos about this item because this item makes everything so much fun. Next up is War Flag. I got to speed this up a little bit. We're 23 minutes in. And I'm not even halfway down the page. Um, War Flag and, and War Banner. This is going to change the game because getting an assist... It got reworked, by the way. Getting an assist when an enemy dies... Uh, also an enemy minion, by the way. It doesn't say enemy minion, but like any enemy, like jungle camp, a, a minion, a god whatever when an enemy dies per, uh, near you you gain a stack that gives you one percent movement speed and two percent attack speed for eight seconds to nearby allies up to 10 stacks while at or above four stacks each time you damage an enemy god you restore 15 health and mana and uh you gain eight gold so basically this super buffs your your hunter and lane you're giving your hunter 20% attack speed and 10% movement speed. And then once you hit the enemy god, you're giving them an additional 15 HP and 15 mana to work with. I know the, the mana and HP is not a lot, but 10% movement and 20% attack speed is a big deal. Th this could lead to a lot of stuff. And then the upgraded version of it is basically like the, the first stuff is like the same, except it's doubled. So it, it's... 20% movement speed and 40% attack speed, which is just fucking ridiculous. Um, but then you have this also, which just gives you health and mana and um, refreshes the duration of these stacks. So super cool. Corrupted Bluestone got a rework. It was too bad. Super shit. It gave you that attack speed, but it didn't give you enough. 
and they wanted to fix it a little bit. So now it's a stacking benefit rather than an application. And um, the stacking benefit lasts for six seconds. So it provide they reduce the power a little bit, but they gave you 150 HP for 10 power, which I'll take any day of the week. And they decrease the attack speed per stack from 15% to 10%. So you're not getting as much attack speed, but you are getting 4% protections per stack. So you're, sacri you're sacrificing 5% attack speed for 4% protection. If you're a tank, you're heavily incentivized to get this now, right? Like on um, like a Bologna or something, because you get a little bit of attack speed, you get a little bit more tanky and you have this 150 extra HP. It's really gonna add up, honestly, a lot. So um, it, it opens up this Corrupted Bluestone to a lot more gods. Um, Death Toll, basically they just made it so cleaved auto attacks heal for 25% more. Um, if they're melee cleave, so like Osiris, Bologna, Erling Shen, gods like those, they heal 25% more with Death Toll. Not that it matters to us dual boys. What's up? So fuck this shit. Um, <laughs> Berserker Shield is a great item. It got one of the, the only time they've ever done this, by the way. They buffed the attack speed from 15% to 25% and the physical protection from 20 to 35. Incredibly high buffs. Very, very strong buffs. But... They made it so hunters can't buy this item. Only assassins and warriors can. The reason they did that is because Berserker Shield was super overpowered for hunters to buy. And it just fit into their build so well, giving them everything they wanted. Attack speed, tankiness, uh, penetration. It gave them everything. So instead, to kind of fix that, they just said, fuck you hunters. We're not, you can't buy this anymore. We're going to super buff this item and we're going to give it to assassins and warriors who can actually utilize it. So, um... Mainly, mainly like tanky assassins, kind of uh, at the top of the dome piece. I'm thinking more about like Thor. Obviously, he doesn't want attack speed. Um, I can't think of any, but it does doesn't matter. I it's a very good item, like Kali, basically. Shoguns kind of got the same treatment. It no longer provides CCR, and now gives you health. The reason being because so many items in the game give you CCR. Shoguns Kasari really didn't fit the bill of being tanky enough. Right? Like, you just weren't tanky enough if you got Shogun's Kasari because it didn't give you any HP. And if you're not tanky, it doesn't matter how long you're stunned for. You die by a one-second stun anyways. So they took off the CCR. They gave it 150 health, and they made you a little bit better for your team by giving you instead of 25% attack speed aura, you have a 30% attack speed aura. So it's quite a bit better. I think this buff is kind of a huge buff to Shogun's Kasari. You might actually see this in Duel quite a bit more, too. Because 150 HP means a lot. Uh, Serrated Edge, just a simple 10 power buff. It uh, it just wasn't being picked up, and 10 power might help it get picked up a bit. By the way, I think Serrated Edge is super good and underrated. So this might break it. Um, Mannequin Scepter, one of my favorite items. Um, Again, now that Benevolence is out of the game, Mannequin Scepter can actually... Well, it's not out of the game. It's out of Duel. Uh, Mannequin Scepter can actually now make a comeback, and it's it kind of got reworked, but it doesn't say it. It just kind of got buffed. The burn damage got increased, so instead of um, what it was doing, it's actually doing this now, and it's scaling. So it used to do a uh, like a certain amount of num a certain amount of damage over time, right? Just boom, 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 boom damage. That's what it does. <clears throat> now. Uh, it, first off, it's four damage higher off base, but it, now it also gives you 5% of your physical or magical power um, over two seconds. So this Mannequin Scepter now scales with you later into the game, and yes, it does scale on gods as well. Um, and then they made it even better by decreasing the amount of stacks from four to three. So now you're doing more damage, and it's ramping up 25% faster. Because it's that same amount of damage, but with one less stack. So it's really good. And then on top of that, it used to give you 15 HP and 15 mana when you kill the buff or a minion. Uh, or like a jungle minion. Uh, but now it gives you 3% of your max HP and 5% of your max mana. In my opinion, these numbers are a little bit too high. But, um, you know, what are you going to do? I think Mana Conceptor is broken. 
I'm probably going to build it on every god if I'm not going to go Boombas. We'll see. Uh, Mannequin Mace just got upgraded to the same kind of percent HP and, and mana as starter item because they didn't want it. Imagine upgrading from Mannequin Scepter to Mannequin Mace and losing HP and mana. That'd be dumb. Uh, Sentinel's Gift, just a slight buff, you know, 50 gold off, three more protections, slight buff, nothing crazy. Conduit Gem, a really big buff, actually, 100 mana is a big deal, early game. So, not everyone's going to be starting with uh, Sands of Time. So, there you go. Right here, provide started um, with, you know, Book of Thoth and Book of the Dead and stuff. Can now be safely rushed, because this gives you a pretty good amount of mana. Vamp Shroud is better at doing what it does now. It has 25% more health and 5% more protection. You basically only buy this if you're fighting somebody who's a physical god that wants to beat the shit out of you and you're Zonkwe or, or someone like that. Um, or you're Zeus in solo lane and you're getting dove. Take it from me. Uh, so it just makes it better at being tanky. And same here. I mean, not, not too much change. It's really just better at being tanky. Um... Instead of getting a bonus stacking lifesteal item, you just heal for a percent of your max HP. And, you know, 15 more protections. Big buff. This Sacrificial Shroud, 15 more power, just so that when you use those abilities, it really does feel like it's hitting and it's worth the, the trade-off of that HP. One more sip of water. I'm sorry. My throat is killing me. <clears throat> Warrior's X. Now, much better, much, 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 much better, insanely better. So it used to do 30 damage and steal 30 health, right? That's just what it did. Now it's 35 damage and you steal 35 health, but it's also scaling one, da one damage per level. So level seven, you're instead of doing 30, you're doing 42. Level 20, if you still have warrior axe and it's not upgraded, instead of doing 30, you're doing 55. So it's a big increase. Um, I really like this change because I think Warrior's Axe is a little uh, down in the dumps right now. So hopefully we'll see that a little more. Atalanta's Bow, very slight bump in power. Not much happened. Just five more damage. Maybe they're trying to they're trying to tweak it a little bit because it's, it's, it's very on the line of being super OP and complete shit. So um, these Cowls now just give you more MP5 so that you can actually build this item and not go out of mana. By not even using abilities. <laughs> uh, Warding Sigil, completely garbage relic. So they decrease the cost by 100, but it's not going to matter. Uh, Tainted Steel, now this one's big. Decreased healing reduction from 20 to 15. However, you get 100% of the healing that you reduced. So yes, you're, you're reducing healing by 5% less, but you're receiving 15% of the healing, right? So instead of a 20% swing in the fight, it's actually a 30% swing because this 15% is now doubled. This is taken from them and given to you. So, I mean, that's that's pretty big. That's a 10% increase in your in your fighting potential. And very good for outplaying. And that's just the starter, by the way. That's not the upgrade. The upgrade is now... It reduces their healing by 30% right here. So now, it's a 60% swing, right? Because you're reducing their healing by 30%. And healing for 100% of that 30% you stole. Which means 60%. It's pretty big. Pretty big. Tainted Breastplate just got more power attached to it. I don't think it needed it. Because I think it's pretty good as is. But more power is not bad. You know, make the game a little bit faster. I'm cool with it. Jade Emperor's Crown. Just a little buff to HP. Uh, Tyrannical Plate Helm. Little, uh, well, I actually a big uh, buff to how much it cost. Might be picked up. I doubt it though. Minions are pretty shit. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about Tyrannical Play Home, if I'm honest. Now on to the gods. More interesting stuff. Amaterasu got buffed. Her charge rate is um, now faster, basically. They increased her charge rate. They increased the charge gain from hitting enemies. So basically, you can just charge it up quicker and actually take advantage of it at level one, and and clear the wave. That's pretty much all. It, that's all it is. Um, and then her alt. Her alt got a little bit of a buff, not too much. Uh, same on the lower end, really, and then scaling upward to equal twenty damage. It's not going to change much. Um, Artemis, 
increase base damage by 10 on her one and decrease the cooldown by four seconds actually a huge a huge buff to the early game trap a really big buff to the early game trap <laughs> and uh not much of one to the late game right like 87 85 10 seconds 10 seconds so more focused on being able to protect yourself early game which i like a lot on artemis as well as this kind of fits the same bill as protecting yourself early game by year two will now give you 25 percent move speed instead of 20 and the cooldown is a little bit lower so you can use it a little bit more often so i think both of these changes are really good kind of save yourself a little bit as artemis baba yaga nobody cares uh two seconds off your three nobody cares um the house does you get a 10 percent bigger shield and the knockback is a little bit further nobody cares baba yaga sucks um get out of my game Baron Samity, huge buffs, huge buffs to Baron. Basic attacks go from two to five on the Hysteria sign. If you don't know what Hysteria is, it's his passive, which basically gives him more damage against you. So you're doing more damage now, basically. Um, again, more Hysteria per hit on the one. And added a power debuff duration to the description. There was a power buff before or power debuff before, but it, it wasn't in the description, so that's kind of like a bug fix. Um, but this is the big one. The two. At level one, the two is two seconds faster. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but two seconds when, when your thing, when you're, it's two seconds on an ability that does damage and also heals. So it, it could be a big swing for fights. Not to mention paired with the Staff of Murden and upgraded Meditation is like a one second cooldown. Where you're spamming so it's pretty nuts dodgy got buffed to 1000 cuts basically the two seconds off of this cooldown again i think it's super big the reason being because you can't use your two to clear and still be there for a fight you'll just die in the fight so this kind of helps her uh be a jungler really achimon the one got buffed at all ranks from uh three th three shots to four shots at all ranks kind of the Medusa treatment, really. Lower cooldown, more shots at all rank, and lower mana cost. It's just the Medusa one treatment that they gave him. And then his two, 10% more power on the scaling. Actually quite big. This, this ability really doesn't hit very hard late game. So this extra 10% power scaling will help a lot to it. And as well as it gave you, or it, they doubled, they doubled the attack speed it gives you at rank one from 5 to 10 when you're standing inside if you don't know when you're standing inside of Hachiman's 2 you actually gain attack speed so uh, they doubled that at rank 1 from 5% to 10% and then it slowly gets a little worse 7.5 to 12.5 uh, 10 to 15 12.5 to 17.5 and then into 20 so it goes actually no it's just I lied to you it's 5% more attack speed per rank that's crazy this is 5% more attack speed um, Hades, I, I, look, if I'm completely honest, I don't know what the fuck they're doing. This is stupid, right? The decreased cooldown on the three, that's, or the two, three, I don't know. It's the three. Um, that's fine. It's just one second. No big deal. Hades is strong. He's not that strong in conquest. So I get that. This is dumb. I'll let you just read this. <coughs> Ridiculous, right? When Pillar of Agony damages an enemy, all of Hades' other abilities have their cooldowns reduced by 0.2 seconds. This is in his ult. This does not happen once. If you ult a minion wave, that's six minions, right? Six times 0.2. What does that get you? 1.2 seconds, right? You're not getting 1.2 seconds off all your cooldowns. It's 0.2 per thing you hit, per tick of the ability. So if you if you hit a minion wave, you know let's just let's just find out, shall we? Let's just find out. Let's say you hit a minion wave four times, right? Four times six equals right times point two. You're getting four point eight seconds off all your cooldowns if you hit a minion wave four times. And in duel, in duel, let's just say you hit one guy you hit him all six times or all six ticks which i think it does six i might do eight it's over a second off all your cooldowns and if you get them in the wave that's even better 
pretty crazy. I think this is a little ridiculous. It's much, it's much bigger in Conquest. It's a much bigger deal in Con Conquest, but we'll see. I think we're going to start seeing some Hades solo with, with Hades all doing this lower cooldowns and the fact that, um, that, um, where is it? Vamp Shroud got a little bit tankier. I think Hades solo is actually a little viable now. So be on the lookout. Uh, Hebo 20 damage at all ranks, basically, or 20 damage on the early game. Um, slowly scaling down to no change late game, but 20 damage on the early game to his one. I mean, I don't think they play smite. Hebo definitely didn't need more damage. That's what that, that's why I think about that. Um, hell has a lot of changes, 10% increased damage on the decay in her dark stance. Reduced mana cost, reduced mana cost, and twenty or and five percent increase healing on the three. So basically, fifteen percent more damage in her dark stance and less mana hungry. Um, for duel, that's ridiculous. Hell is much. It's going to be much stronger in duel. Um, she's already strong, but she'll be much stronger in conquest. I'm not sure how that's going to affect it. Hera, commanding presence. Oh, that's just that's just Argus. Five percent more damage to Argus. That's just how it is. Five percent on his first hit. Five percent on his second. Five percent on his third. If he hits you with all three autos, it's fifteen percent more damage per combo. And uh, your one does twenty more damage late game. Same amount of damage early game. Not much difference. Just pretty much just an Argus thing. Argus is going to be bopping you late game. So be ready. Uh, Jormungandr, his three, it's supposed to be used as a getaway or an engagement. But with only 25% move speed, I didn't feel like it was very good because if you got hit, you're out and knocked out of it anyways and your move speed goes away. So they made it, instead of 25, it's now 35%, which is much better in my opinion. And his basic attack damage from 9.6 to 10.4, it's a revert. Um, they basically lowered it from 12 to 9.6 and now they're giving it to 10.4. Yeah, I don't think it'll change it much. Kali, Kali got big buffed. She got like big, big buffed. Um, lower mana on the one, which is a big deal. Uh, increased mana in general and lower mana on the three, which is a big deal. So, cause everyone knows Kali is super, super mana hungry. There's been countless times where I've been playing Kali in videos and I die because I'm like 10 mana short on my alt because she's so mana hungry, but you know, this helps a lot. And then the two, they wanted to increase how it felt to get that triple hit on your two on someone. So now you're doing much more damage. Um, per blade does 10 damage more. So you're doing much more damage. Uh, by hitting all three, right? So instead of 225, it's 255. Plus the scaling, obviously. So it's 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 really nice. I think this is a good call. I think I think the buff on Kali is actually nice. Mulan. Eh, nobody likes Mulan, but whatever. I'll say it. Wanna, I'll say it. I'll say it. Um, she was not very good as a warrior. Because she was too squishy. So they increased her base health and how much health she gets per level. So... Over the course of the game, let me just calc it. Let me calc it. You start at 490, and then you're getting 84. So you're getting plus 84. Well, actually, let's do this. 84 times 20. No, no, no. Times 19? Because you start at level 1. So 84 times 19 plus 490. That's 492. So just for being alive in the game, you're going to have 2,086 HP as opposed to, um, well, that's only 40 and that's 10, right? So 2,000, I guess. Yeah. I mean, a little bit more, like an extra 100 HP is not bad, right? Nobody's going to complain about that. Um, the two does 15% more damage or not. That's not the two, the one, the one. Yeah, the one does 15% more damage. I think she needs it, so I'm okay with that. And the three now provides you with protections. All the Mulan mains, all two of them, 
all the Mulan mains um, now get 5% protection. And um, when they use the three. <laughs> That's it. Um, Odin's cooldowns got reduced. His, his jumps, basically his bird bomb got reduced by one second from 12 to 11 in, in both things. We can do it a second earlier, which could make the difference for a lot of games. And his three does 10% more damage. I mean, I think... I think he's good as a niche pick, and I think he will always be a niche pick because of what his alt does. So buffing him or nerfing him, I don't think it matters. But the buffs are nice if you want to jungle Odin or something, you know what I mean? Um, Oleron... 10% more damage on Overflowing Divinity, which I think is his 2. But, yeah, his 2 gets 10% more damage when he throws the, uh, the autos out. And his ult now has 20 seconds cooldown lowered early game. Obviously, it's still capped at 100. You can see here, 100-100. Um, but 20 seconds early game is a big deal. You're going to be able to fight for objectives much more often with Oleron and his alt. And by the way, Oleron, when you stunned Oleron in his alt, your summon actually last 40% longer rather than 40% shorter. Kind of a bug, kind of intended. Um, so to counteract that, they just give you 40% CCR while you're in the alt. I don't think it changes anything. I think it, the, the alt now works as intended in my eyes. But 10% more damage on the two is good. Um, Ratatasker, nothing really changed. Obviously, you can't build boots anymore, so they're just lowering the, the move speed you get from Acorn, because if they didn't, you would be easily the, the fastest god in the game, right? So, they're just lowering movement speed on all the Acorns. Um, Susano and Terra, you can now fire these abilities. Susano's ult and Terra's two. You know, fire them while dead. Basically, they gave him the Scylla treatment. Scylla two, Isis ult. You can fire those while they're while you're dead, and it seemed inconsistent with Susano Alt and Terra, so they just fixed it. Um, Thor, you now get your passive, which is uh, protections and more power. Um, while within 55 units instead of 30, because Hunter's auto attack ranges is 55 units. So if you are in range to be hit, you will have your passive up. That's a really good quality of life change, I think. And the Alt does 10% more damage when you land on someone. Really just to help you get that secured kill. Um, Thoth, 5% more damage on the one, which is actually 15% more damage on the one because it hits three times. I don't think he needed it. I think Thoth won chunks anyways. But extra 15% damage if you hit all three. Oh man, that's... uh. That's a yikes, man. That's a yikes. Tiamat, more nerfed. More nerfed. Serpents, whenever... Oh, by the way. So, Tiamat's minions almost won the game in the SPL because they went to go kill the Titan and the Titan couldn't kill them. <laughs> so, a minion wave and Serpents almost won the game in the SPL. And so, in order to fix that, basically, whenever a minion auto-attacks a Titan or a phoenix, or a tower, it takes one of the hits away from its own health bar. So when it hits something, it gets hit in return. Only on objectives, though. Not on minions or, or gods or something. Um, and then they decrease the lifetime of the Minotaur from 30 seconds to 15. Just getting chased around the map for half a, half a minute is ridiculous. Um, Freya got a, a slight quality of life buff with just lower mana costs. Nox 1 now does 10% more damage to minions, with a little bit more than 10% on the end of the scale. Uh, Yamoja. Oh, man. Okay. Let me run through Yamoja. This is the last change, by the way. I know it's been a 50-minute video, but this is the last change. Yamoja and her Omi. You no longer gain Omi by needing MP5 or mana. Instead, you automatically gain the Omi... At level 6, 11, and 16, which now means that you don't need to prioritize building cooldown or anything or stacking mana in order to actually get that Omi because you were kind of locked into a really shitty support build 
by that. So now you just automatically gain Naomi at level 6, 11, and 16. And any kind of mana or MP5 you have is now converted to health at a rate of 20%. Um, the one does slightly more damage. Just slightly. 10, 10 more damage at every rank. Um, the alt got 10 second nerf to it, actually, which is good. And they made it. Now there's a small delay between the bouncing bubbles. So if you're a Yamoja player, you, you're going to know what I'm talking about. When you use your one, you bubble them and then you stun them and then you bubble them and then you stun them. Because there's no cooldown, if you press it fast enough, you can actually permanently stun them. You can actually permanently keep them locked in the cage. Um, so they added a slight post fire a small delay, uh, if you will, to the bubble. So now you'll bubble and you'll stun. And then that second bubble, once you use it, is going to be a little bit delay. So that next stun you throw out, you're going to actually have to aim it and hit it again. So you don't have to, you can't be brain dead and you're all spamming one like I do. But that's pretty much the Pat's notes. Let's get into final thoughts, shall we? So, final thoughts of patch notes. I think it's a really good patch. Um, it really turns the MOBA scene on its head. Uh, removing boots is such a ballsy move. I mean, I, I love it. The meditation reducing cooldown, the staff of Murden giving you 80% cooldown. And I think we're going to see a lot of innovation. I think we're going to see more innovation. More innovation in this patch than the entire other eight seasons of the game, period. Because not having boots leads to so many new meta builds that you can do. And I'm super looking forward to it. I think this patch is exactly what I needed in order to kind of keep pushing my, my love for Smite more and more and more. And um, I'm super excited for it. Let me know what you guys think about it. Um, I think... I think the boots thing is where a lot of people are just going to be angry because change and, and people hate change. Um, obviously animosity being removed from duel is a great thing. Um, I don't think they need to remove every starter item because starter items can be fun and add a level of um, complexity to the game where you need to kind of go around and, and, and outplay and counterplay and stuff like that. So I actually like starter items. There are some that are OP like animosity was OP. Death toll is OP. I think Boomba's hammer might need to remove, be removed. But mannequins and um, conduit gem and sands of time and vamp shroud, like you can all kind of work around those, right? They're not game winning by themselves. Uh, so I, 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 I quite like, I quite like where where a duel is going to be at here. And you know, like I said, the one, the one. Uh, ban increase from five to six is a little bit annoying it's just gonna make lobbies just a little bit longer i wish what you could do i wish you could in the lobby like when you queue for duel i wish when you queued for duel a god screen would come up and you could just ban your six gods there right and then when they did it they could ban their six gods too so that when you get into the lobby those 12 gods are just automatically banned and you don't have to go oh ban oh ban oh ban oh ban oh ban oh ban and be in the lobby for three and a half minutes for your dual game starts, you know? But maybe that's just a quality of life thing because I'm a YouTuber and I queue so much dual that I've probably wasted six years of my life just in the ban phase. So, <laughs> I don't know. Let me know what you guys think of this. I know this was almost an hour-long video, but this mid-season patch, I mean, dude, like, come on. It's, it's gigantic. It's just a huge, like... Look at this. Just a huge patch. Um, and no, I'm not going to do this for every patch. I'll be doing this for like when there's a new season and everything's changing or mid-season patch and everything's changing. I'll do it for stuff like this, but not for every patch. Um, let me know what you guys think about everything and how you're feeling. I love you guys. If you did sit through all 55 minutes of this video, I want you to go down below and say, Sam, have a good day. I'm with you to the end. If you say that, I will appreciate it so much. And I read all my comments if, in case you guys don't know. So 
you know, if you want to just have a conversation, maybe, you know, say what's up. Uh, anyways, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and until next time, peace.